but initially we wanted to do it on um, your hair transplant but then we thought we could just um, have a chat about what else you've been up to but uh, firstly if you just tell us when you had your transplant and when you first noticed your hair like thinning um, <clears throat> I got a hair transplant done on November the 15th 2017 I've literally had traction alopecia bad for the last three years and what is traction alopecia? Um, traction alopecia is when it's like traction so you keep pulling your hair oh. in like hairstyles so yeah. like it could be tight cane rows maybe like just putting loads of products and really slicking your hair tight and then over the time the hair starts to thin and then the follicles fall out and then they do gradually grow back but once you keep doing it, they, they just stop growing and it becomes like scar tissue. Okay. Yeah. So that's literally what happened to me, like, over the last three years. Okay. Um, um, where did you go to have your transplant done? Um, I went to Istanbul in Turkey. Okay, why did you go there? Clinic called Longevita. Um, I went there because it was a lot more, like, cost-effective. It was a lot cheaper, like, more than 50% cheaper. Over here is literally, like, eight grand for a hair transplant. Oh, really? And that's a lot of money to try and get together. And yeah. I done my research and I found out Turkey is one of the like leading countries that do hair transplants. Okay. So I done my research into it and I found yeah. a really nice company. Okay. Yeah. And did nothing else work before, like creams or oils? Nothing. But then to be honest, I didn't really try too much, but I just tried giving my hair a break and just okay. using natural stuff and never grew back. But then when I actually done like a close observation of my scalp, I could see there was no like holes for the follicles oh, to come through. Yeah, so okay. I knew it was over from there, to be honest. Okay. <clears throat> and talk us through like the procedure. Um. So first they take your blood to make sure that like, your blood is all okay. You're not allowed to drink like alcohol um, three days before okay. and smoke and stuff. So they literally just take your blood, make sure your blood levels are good. And then they start with shaving like a big square from the back of your head yeah. once they shave the back of your head they um i don't know what they've done but they got like these numbing injections numbed all around the back of my head and then this part i don't really know because i was like facing forward yeah. you know like when you go to a massage and you've got the circle yeah. in the bed yeah i was basically yeah. in that so they've done something where they took loads of follicles on the back of my head and then they put it out on like these bandages and then after that, they do something with the follicles where they like clean them up and they, they put them all out separately so that there's like a long, there's like thousands. There was like over 3,000, so they put them all out, yeah. And then they numbed all my head yeah. and they shaved all my hair off. That part was horrible, but they shaved like every single piece of hair off my head off. And yeah, they numbed my head and then they started, um, a woman came and she literally like had like a knife and she cut loads of like, holes in my scalp so that they could like yeah. implant the follicles painful. that none of that hurt the most painful part was the injections to numb my head yeah, okay. because you can like they were putting it in my forehead yeah. and as you can like your skull like it's your skull it's yeah. bone isn't it yeah. so it was horrible it's the worst that was the worst part but other than that it was pain free okay. the whole transplant didn't hurt at all yeah and what made you share your story because it was really brave of you to come out and like let everyone know I wasn't going to share it, but then I thought, how am I going to hide this? Because I wasn't allowed to, hide, like, cover my hair for five days. Couldn't, okay. like, wear a bandana yeah. too much. Like, there was nothing I could really do. So I thought, people are going to see me, and there's no point lying. I've already lied the last three years. Like, I get a lot of support, and people were saying, oh, your hair's so nice. But little did they know that was, like, my biggest insecurity in my hair. Yeah. So How did you cover it up then for so Like, long? mascara. I used to use, like, black hair, like, hair mascara or just normal, like, eyelash mascara. Okay and cover it up every single day, but it was just so, like, time-consuming. Yeah, it must have made you paranoid. Yeah, well. all the time. Yeah. Um, what reaction have you had from people? Um, it's mainly been very positive. Like, I didn't think it was going to be so positive. Yeah. I've had so even today, like, I've got so many messages on Instagram, like, DMs, yeah. um, even YouTube, so many people, like, yeah. supporting. I've had a lot of, like, hair companies sending me wigs oh, and yeah. sending me hair products. Yeah. There's some people called um, Treasure Trust, they literally send me like boxes of like natural products every month. So they've really been helping because I think I was using all the wrong products before. Yeah. So they've been sending me like really nice stuff and just so many people reached out with similar stories. So I had so many people like get in touch yeah. who have traction alopecia or just different types of alopecia. And yeah. there was another girl who shared her story after me, one of my fans, and she said none of her friends, no one knows yeah. that she's got alopecia. She had like no hair on her head at all. And she actually put up a post inspired by me which was yeah. very very touching like it was yeah because it is very inspiring even for other like issues as well yeah. just to be brave enough to yeah. come out and say 
Um, how did it make you feel like mentally and stuff? Um, the first like five days, I hated everything. I started to like, I was thinking, did I do the right thing? Because I was looking in the mirror and I looked so ugly and I just had no confidence at all. That was the worst part, but then, because my face was really swollen and there was nothing I could do, I had to sleep on my back. I just had no confidence, did not leave the house. When I did leave the house, I stayed at my friend's house in West Drayton, because that's like out of end, so I stayed there for a few days. Had no confidence, everyone was always looking at my head because it looked sore and it was like bloody and loads of red dots. Yeah. Um, after like the first week, I could see like little hairs coming through, so I got a bit of confidence, but yeah. I don't know. It took a while, so I'd say it took at least three to four weeks. Oh really? It's not too long. Though. Gain like good confidence, really. Yeah. But like right now, I'm very happy, and I I'm, yeah. I like my hair short. I might even keep it short. It looks nice. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, what's the next stage? Are you still having treatment or? Um, well, right now I'm doing PRP therapy, what's which that? is um, so basically after coming back to London, I I I done like a video on YouTube, and I told people I went to Longevita, so. I think I got low, like, I basically referred so many people that Longevita got in contact with me and they said they will offer me, like, um, free um, PRP therapy. So PRP therapy is where they take your blood and then they put it in this machine and it separates, like, all the blood cells and then they inject it back into your head with, like, this gun. That's it. It's, it looks like a Uzi, like a proper gun, but they inject it back into your head and it stimulates, like, growth. So I've I've done two sessions so far, so it's making the hair transplant area like over here grow a lot faster than yeah. other like anyone else that'd get a hair transplant. Oh. So I think I've got like two more sessions and yeah, that should be it. Okay, that's good. Um, let's talk about your music now. Uh, you recently been on tour. How was yeah. that? Ah, oh, that was good. Like toured all around Europe. I went countries that I've always wanted to go. So I went yeah. to Russia, Moscow. I've always wanted to go there. And um, yeah, it was proper dope. Like every single city showed like crazy love. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any plans for the next one? Um, yeah, probably this year. Once spring summer comes, definitely do another yeah. um, EU tour 100. Um, do you know what? I, I'm right now. I'm in a pickle. I don't know what song to release. Okay. So I've worked on a whole mixtape. I've got it. It's all sorted. But I just don't know what track I want to release because I don't. I, I feel like it's a new year. 2018, I need to come out of a banger, so mm -hmm. right now I'm still trying to pick what song I want to put what out next. Think, yeah. This month, one this on. month. Yeah, I reckon I'm going to put something out this month, before the end of the month. If not, then first, second week of February. Okay, and mm. any collaborations? Yeah, I've got a few collaborations in my product, um, yeah. project, product, <laughs> project. Um, I've got odd ads. I started something with One Asin as well. We need to finish that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Muller Stacks. He's the guy I done like a little Afro beat thing with. He's literally 15. I think he's so talented. So yeah. I got in contact to get him on my project. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else you want to work with? Um, I'd love to work with Kojo Funds, Young yeah. Bane, Mo Stack. Like I worked with Mo Stack on his Nobody remix time ago, years ago when he first came out. Yeah. But I'd love to work with him, Jay Huss, all of them. Yeah. And recently, there's been a lot of talk on Twitter with you and Lady Lee. Yeah. How did that? How did that come um, about? Do you know what? I'll keep it real. Like I just don't like being drawn out all the time in it, and like it was just all the time like mentioning me and your music, putting slide digs out there in your music, and I always just got on with it. But then I just thought that enough is enough. Like you said too much in this track, yeah. so I just took to Twitter because I could. There was nothing else I could do. Like I can't yeah. say it to the wall. Like so yeah. I took to Twitter to put my side of the story out there, and then. It just turned into this whole. I didn't think it was gonna be this crazy, but yeah, then again, it would. Quite nasty yeah, actually. but I was gonna reply, but I just thought, you know what? I don't want to put all my energy into like negatives. I might as well. Yeah. I don't want to be thrown off course when I'm working on like yeah. a set project. So I'm just gonna allow it and just. Yeah, were you two in a relationship? Yeah, like in 2012. Okay. So it's been so long that this is like crazy that all of this has come out now. Yeah. What, what was the most disappointing aspect for you about her? Um, her sending for you. Just because it's been so long, like if you're still hurt, cool. Like we're big people. Come talk to me. Mm. I would have reached out to her online, but she's blocked me on every social networking site you yeah. can imagine. Mm. And the thing that hurts me is we didn't like stop talking on bad terms. So we were still friends in 2014 mm. when she literally moved. Like she got a house in London, yeah. Mm. Mm. And I think the only reason why all of this has happened is because she dates one of my closest friends who now, which is sad because I fell out with her as well. On that subject, yeah, so that's because, because that's the issue, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, as far as
as as far as I've been led to believe, I don't know mm. too much. I'm forty years old, <laughs> so you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. It's a world away from me. But I saw what you dropped at the back end of last year. Yeah. In terms of the tweets and stuff, um, clearly you've explained you couldn't get hold yeah. of her as other way to get her attention. Yeah. In regards to you mentioning the fact that she was dating one of your friends, though, do people know that your friends? Well, she well she sent me a text saying that she doesn't like people know and she's confident yeah. and comfortable. So I'm assuming. Yeah, because that was one yeah. of the things that Alicia said, isn't it? Yeah. That she didn't. You you've effectively outed yeah. this girl when you didn't want to be outed at a time. Talk about that being a lesbian in the industry, your relationship with Alicia, because I knew about it years ago. So it was it was a an industry secret. I don't think people, too many yeah. people outside of the industry knew about it. Talk about the difficulties of being in a relationship like that in the industry yeah. and keeping holding it down. Is it difficult? I think it is, to be honest. I think being in a relationship with anyone, male or female, in a music industry is hard because, like, it's pressure. There's a lot of pressure because you're both in the public eye and then sometimes you might not want to share that you're in a relationship. And then there's going to be late nights, you might be in the studio, you might be insecure because this person's always with this artist or this producer or whatever. And But then at the same time, there's, like, pros. Like, you understand each other because you're both in, like, the, a similar industry. So I feel like it depends, really. Do you, um, I mean, you mentioned it first, mm-hmm. whereas we could have come into the new year and there would have been no David Leisha R.I.P. Yeah. Um, so do you regret that now or do you? I don't regret anything at all because now I'm at peace in myself and I just wanted her to know that I'm not an idiot, like just stop, like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, just stop drawing me out in your music, innit, so. Mm-hmm. Do you think she will stop now? Because I mean, she She, she probably won't, that's the thing. I know, her, I know her more than she probably knows herself, so she probably won't, but. Yeah. I don't care. I'm, as long as I'm happy, that's all that matters. So. The, the, the cynical view yeah. would be that you did it to draw attention to your own projects that are coming out and your own music. Um, um, I think Did you release a track at the back end of last year or were you just playing it in the background? I think I saw a video of you. Yeah, I haven't actually released anything right, okay. since like autumn last year. Right. So, yeah. so with your project coming, yeah. you then mentioning this when it was done five years ago, six years ago. Can you understand what people yeah. thinking is a bit cynical of you to kind but of... If I was doing it as a strategy, I would have released that already and I haven't because mm. I'm waiting for that to die down so I can put my own project out like later on. And well, is, that, is that the smart thing to do now? I mean, everybody's looking now. I know, but I don't, I don't want people to look just because of that. I want yeah. people to like look because of my music and not just because, oh, let's see if she's replied as a diss. Like, mm. not trying to get that sort of publicity. So, so for, as far as you're concerned, it's done? Yeah, that's done. I'm over it. I even deleted the clip I put on my Instagram because... I'm over it. I said what I needed to say, so... She was particularly harsh in that track, though. To be honest, I haven't even heard it all. I only heard a little clip that was on Instagram. And, like, one thing with me, I'm very spiritual. Like, I don't want to feed into anything that I feel like is not good for my soul. So I haven't clicked it deliberately. And I don't want to click it. So I'm just going to live my life and just... I don't know. If people want to quote it to me, quote it. But I don't know what she said in the track. I only know the little, like, 30 second clip that she put out there. But the first one, the freestyler, when she actually recorded it. The freestyle that was on her Instagram. See, now that, yeah. what Someone I saw. sent that to me and that's all I've seen. I right. haven't seen the music video. So when you saw that freestyle, what did you feel? Because I saw it and I thought, wow, that's a lot of pain in there. <laughs> like she went in, like I'm looking at her and thinking, it's not just the lyrics, it's not just the fact that she's gone and penned it. It's none of that. It's watching her, I thought, Yo, you look upset, man. You look angry. I think personally she should, you like she should put that energy into her music because she looked like she put her heart and soul in it. She did, I yeah, think yeah. she did. I think she should do that with her music. I think mm. she's very talented. I'm not a hater, that's one thing. So yeah. mm. I think she should continue with that sort of energy, but just try not to talk about me and just do her thing. But that energy was sick, yeah. All right, well, considering this is done then, I mean, there was a, I was watching uh, an old uh, episode of the Half Past, Half, Half Cast podcast, um, and they were chatting about the fact that, you know, because it was so long ago, um, maybe there's a bit of resentment because she popped and you didn't. Those aren't my words, I'm just kind of summarising. She did pop, you haven't quite got hit those heights that she has. There's a lot of people that think you will. Are you surprised that it went like that over the last few or four years? Or is that just music? Just I think it's just music. And I, and as, I, as I'm saying, like when she released Brush Your Teeth, yeah. we was friends. Mm. I was at her show, I was, I was there like singing it. I loved that track. Mm. Like, so it was never like, it was never like anything crazy and like haterish, like I was supporting. So what happened in the last two years then, if, it, if it's... I think she just got with my friend and I just feel like, yeah. 
they she tried to move on which is cool we both moved on anyway but i just feel like maybe she just tried to block me out but the way she went about it was just a bit weird because we was talking and then you know like when you start drifting with someone you don't talk every day but you talk yeah. sometimes that happened and then she just blocked me on everything one day i was just on um I was on Twitter and then obviously we was both in a tweet like, oh, my favourite female rappers and we're both in it. So I clicked it, it said, you're blocked. I was thinking, right, like we was talking like two weeks ago. So I was just a bit confused, but yeah. Who else inspires you in the game? Um, Steph. Mm -hmm. Like we're both from the same end. She's a good friend and it's just good to see her like making moves. And I really, really like her music and she's very genuine as well. So. Would you guys collab? 100, yeah. 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 What, what's um, an ideal collaboration for you outside of the UK. Who would you really like to sit down with pen right write some write some music with? Drake, because he's my favourite artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one hundred Jake. Um I'm trying to think who else. Um I really like like her, the singer from I think she's from New York, yeah. I like to work with her scissor. Like I think she's sick. I I'm interviewed her later so I'm gonna tell her. Are you? Yeah. I don't even know if we're ever to relieve her or not. <laughs> Where we are, tell her anyway. <laughs> yeah, like, I think she's sick. Um, I'm trying to think, there's so many. She's, Kalani. In, a, she's, in, a, she's in a gap campaign. That's good. All this week, you're going to see her on my, on my, on my channel in a gap campaign. Um, oh, wow. Hardcore, so say that's real. I'm going to tell her. Yeah. I'll tell her, and I will tell her as well. Yeah. Because I'm that one. <laughs> cool, sorry, okay. um, yeah, like, there's, like, there's loads of artists. I can name those, like, Bryce and Tilla, Rihanna. Mm. I can name so many, like, all of them. Oh, that's a good look. That's a good look. How do you see 2018 planning out for you? Um, I see it good. I want to release my project. I've got a film coming out in Easter that I've done with the BBC. Fantastic. And I've got a really good role in it. It's called Verse. Um, it's like a UK 8 Mile, like Eminem's film. UK based and I play like a battle rapper in it. Um, I'm not going to say too much, but you're going to see it. It's going to come out in cinemas in Easter, so it's a dope film. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're still on your acting? Yeah, so yeah. I had a little part in the intent too yeah. that they're filming right now in Jamaica. Yeah. And on Nicky Slim too. Yeah, so like I had a little, I, I shot with them for a day as well. Yeah. Um, I also shot like a pilot for YouTube Red. I don't know when it's going to come out. Yeah. It's called Pixies. Hopefully it comes out this year. Um, that's it acting wise, but music wise, I'm going to put out a project, put out some dope visuals because I've kind of been slacking, but I wasn't slacking. The ending of last year, I did a lot, just not music related. I've done a lot with brands and um, my hair, so I just took a little break out. Did, did facing your truth in terms of your hair and all of the things that came with that, did, did that really surprise you? Because you sounded surprised that the, the, the you know, people that you told about the company that you went to, gone to the company, the company's come back to you. It's like a full circle of, yeah. of, of realness there, love, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like you, done it from here yeah. and, and so they came back and gave me free treatment and yeah. for me that's how life goes but has that surprised you that it's gone like that given you know you, you were looking searching for an option outside of the UK because it costs a lot of money yeah yeah I am surprised I didn't think it was just gonna I didn't think I was gonna get that much love even people that say they don't like me now seem to have nice things to say and I wasn't doing it to I weren't doing it to win anyone's hearts I was just doing it for my own peace of mind and yeah and it's just nice that people can relate and then it's nice that the company has now given me free treatment which is lovely like I couldn't ask for anything better but that, is that is that kind of giving you uh, uh, a way to move forward because you're true facing your truth yeah has, has brought you closer to your goal yeah I believe giving you that, good luck I, I mean that, that, is that going to be something that you use and Continue with? Yeah, 100. I think it's all just, yeah, facial truth, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Where'd you get your girls from again? I saw you when you opened them out. You've got them for your birthday, right? Um, oh, no, I haven't. I'm going to pick them up after this oh, interview. No. Um, Gold Point is in, I don't know if it's West or North or South Norwood. You'll have a bit of Tom, don't you? That's what we call it in East London, a bit of Tom. Tom yeah. Fallery, a bit of jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> I love gold, yeah. I mm. think I get it from my dad. Oh, is he busy doing something? Yeah, he's got like gold tooth, yeah. chaps, he's a big sovereign, like, yeah. he's got a lot of gold, so. Oh, Mr. T, innit? Yeah, nice one of them ones. <laughs> what, what, what else do you get in terms of inspiration from your, your parents? Um, what do you get from them? If there were some key traits that you got from them, what would they be? Um, I don't know. My mum's a hard worker, so like, even when I was a kid, she had loads of jobs, so I think I get my hard working attitude from my mum. And my dad is just lively. He's probably the most popular guy in Hackney. So I think I get my popularity and my confidence from my dad, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Chef? Um, what advice would you give to anyone 
seem like a hit or flop or anything um, in life? I would say do what makes you happy in it and if if you can't find any other like means to fix what you what problem you have then do what you know will fix it and just remember you're not the only one out here facing the challenges that you're facing because there's so many people and sometimes it's good to show your that you're vulnerable yeah. and I just think stop trying to follow what people look like in magazines and do you no one's gonna judge you and as long as you're happy in yourself you'll be happy in life to be honest